Ik open deze bijzondere procedure van de Commissie voor Buitenlandse Zaken uh, over de situatie in West-Papua. Ik heet onze gasten van harte welkom. Ik heet natuurlijk ook de leden van de commissie die hier aanwezig zijn welkom, evenals de mensen die dit gesprek vanaf de publieke tribune of via de livestream thuis volgen. Uh, en op verzoek van onze gastsprekers zal de rest van dit gesprek in het Engels gaan plaatsvinden. I would like to welcome the representatives of the United Liberation Movement for West Papua. We have requested this meeting with us and I welcome Mr. Benny Wenda, interim president of the United Liberation Movement, Mr. Alex Sobel, chair of the International Parliamentarians for West Papua, Mr. Oridek Ab, chair of the EU mission van the United Liberation mm -hmm. Movement and Mr. Tim Hansen, legal advisor of the United Liberation Movement. I would like to inform the members that the camera team from KRO and CRV will be filming in the meeting room for the production of a documentary. They will be filming from behind the press table and I remind the members that this meeting is public and that it will also be live streamed on the website of the Tweede Kamer. This meeting will last until 12.45, so we have about 45 minutes. And I would now like to invite the delegation of the United Liberation Movement to take the floor. Mr. Wenda. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Berun, for sharing this uh, uh, hearing. Thank you for Foreign Affairs Committee member who have joined us today. Thank you, the honorable member and excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Today, on behalf of people of West Papua and my provincial government, I uh, would like to thank you for uh, this opportunity. We know that this very day is a very important day for our people <clears throat> in West Papua. Yesterday is a day of uh, 60 years uh, uh, anniversary of uh, reinstallment of the New Guinea Rat Council back in 1961. Uh, people of West Papua came out on the street supporting the, this meeting as well as uh, celebrating. They not forget until today they still remember that uh, New Guinea Rat Council uh, are formed by the Dutch, that the promise they asked that that is a, that an important day. <clears throat> Uh, secondly, I would like to thank you on behalf of my people, uh, uh, Christian Uni, Uni uh, put the motion and the motion adopted the House of Representatives here. Uh, on behalf of my people, I would like to thank you. And that's give us confidence that that is the, the first time in the, our history uh, to adopt that motion to put pressure on UNI Commission visit. That's very important. And uh, that's uh, very, very important. <clears throat> Me and my delegations here with the Alex Obelt and the international lawyer for West Papua, we're here to, to uh, inform and update current situation in, uh, in West Papua, <clears throat> which is in human rights situation in West Papua, we know that uh, in Europe is uh, facing the people of Ukraine uh, are under attack, and we are same sentiment, we same sympathy with the uh, Ukrainian people. But West Papua, 60 years, we have struggled for, for our self-determination. Current situations, 60,000 60, to 100,000 uh, are displaced mostly women and children, since Indonesia uh, launched the military operation back in 2018. Up to now, a uh, place like Intan Jaya, Punjak Jaya, Maibarat, uh, Oxibil, uh, Nduga are uh, displaced. Our church been burned. Our pastor been killed. Well-known pastor is Reverend uh, Sanabani, I will kill his Bible translator back in, in, the, in, in, in Tanjaya. So far, Indonesian military killed seven pastors, seven pastors, from Catholics and uh, also from the Tabernacle Church 
and Baptist. So this is the seven pastors that were killed. And uh, mostly the displaced people, 400 people have died last five years. Women and children, women give birth in, in, in the bush and children are dying. In Indonesia, so far, they are targeting children. Last one is seven years old boy were killed in, in Tanja, uh, uh, Punjab. And that UN uh, expert already confirmed last week, already confirmed that Indonesia systematically killing the children. Sometimes as human level, very sad to come here to address this human, human rights situation in West Papua, but I have to. West Papua is becoming militarized zone in West Papua. 2018 up to now, 250,000 troops deployed in West Papua. School were closed. Churches are using by Indonesian military. School are using by Indonesian military. Extrajudicial killing is continued. Now, while I'm speaking, last month, Indonesia deployed another additional troop. Is 400 troops are deployed in West Papua. Political prisoner, currently Victor Jemo, is facing 25 years in prison, just peacefully. You may know that in 2019, the Indonesia uh, uh, police and military are called Papua and a monkey, go home. That's the that's, uh, biggest protest. Victor Jemo, one of the peacefully leading, he's now facing uh, 25 years. And eight West Papuan last December uh, uh, also uh, arrested, just holding the morning staff flag, paint by the hand, and marching, asking self-determination independent, they've been arrested. Now, Kain Pepe member also been arrested. Uh, last few days, West Papua Council of uh, uh, Bukta Tabuni and his member also been arrested. <clears throat> so this is the current situation. Now, UN accent in West Papua, UN been calling uh, to enter the, because of humanitarian crisis in West Papua. Uh, we, West Papua, calling UN High Commissioner visit, including this is not our calling, but Pacific Island Forum uh, passed the motion to support UN High Commissioner visit West Papua. OICP, Africa, Caribbean, Pacific, are uh, calling to UN High Commissioner visit West Papua. Uh, yet Indonesia not allowed to, to UNI Commission visit. This is 79 country now, uh, more uh, uh, are also calling, British government are calling, and European uh, Commission are also calling UNI Commission visit. And in fact, that your uh, 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 parliament here and that parliament also passed a motion to call. So, and yet Indonesia still uh, not allowed. So we need. Meneer Van Raak, het is misschien toch het handigste als we eerst de heer... Oh, could, could you please repeat the last statement, because I didn't hear it and didn't understand it. Uh, yes, uh, European Parliament, European Commission also call UN High Commissioner visit West Papua. That's the current uh, call. So we also know that uh, Madrid uh, Senate also call UN High Commissioner visit. I was last month address the Senate and Congress in uh, Madrid. So this is not only individual country, but it's collective country. And you know, uh, we know that Indonesia is a part of the, the member of the United Nations. And these 79 countries are member of the United Nations are called. And I hope that the Dutch government could uh, add the more pressure on the Indonesia government because current humanitarian crisis is, is alarming. It really, really need uh, support for uh, your support. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Wanda. I'm looking at the other guests, if they have uh, the wish to present uh, an initial statement. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm Alex Sobel. I'm a member of the United Kingdom House of Commons, and I'm the chair of the All-Party Parliamentary Party. Thanks. 
and I'm chair of the All Party Parliamentary Group on West Papua and chair of the International Parliamentarians for West Papua, or the IPWP. The IPWP is a network of parliamentarians from around the world. The IPWP also has individual chapters in parliaments around the world, including in the UK, New Zealand, Spain, and soon to be launched in the European Parliament in Brussels. We also have a network of vice chairs, including one from the European Parliament, Solomon Islands, Spain, Italy, Finland and Nigeria. Recent IPWP work has focused on human rights in West Papua. As you heard from Benny, the human rights situation is very poor and no external mission has been there since the World Council of Churches visited in February 2019. The IPWP has been increasing international pressure for a visit, which was agreed by the UN Human Rights Council and Indonesia, but Indonesia has come up with different bureaucratic reasons why this visit hasn't gone ahead. So we've raised questions and motions in various parliaments. In answer to various questions posed by MEP and IWP Vice Chair Carlos Puigdemont, Vice President, High Representative of the Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Josep Borrell, stated that the EU encourages Indonesia to allow the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights to visit West Papua and has urged Indonesia to extend standing invitations to all special rapporteurs and mandate holders. This unequivocal statement of support for the visit made on behalf of the EU Commission as the growing number of individual states and regional bodies that voice concern over human rights violations in West Papua and Indonesia's continual denial of access for a visit from the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. These include the Pacific Islands Forum and the Organisation of African, Caribbean and Pacific States. Josep Borrell also responds to questions raised over the EU's trade agreement with Indonesia, which went to its 11th round of negotiations last November, and whether or not Indonesia's human rights record in the context of West Papua would be taken into consideration. He noted ongoing concern with regard to the safeguarding of freedom of expression, association and peaceful assembly in West Papua and that there would, be no, there would be a need sorry, for respect for human rights to be embedded in any free trade agreement between the EU and Indonesia. With regards to the amount of funds the Commission has allocated to West Papua since 2001, Burrell stated €4.7 million Euros have been sent covering areas of democracy, civil society, peace process, healthcare education and land use planning. He also added that the EU has spent €112 million Euros funding projects in Indonesia relating to climate change, deforestation, education, health and human rights, which includes operations in West Papua. The EU itself has recently adopted a new business and human rights framework, which outlines mandatory human rights and environmental due diligence with regards to how funds are spent. In the case of West Papua, this raises questions on how this money is actually spent by Indonesia and the obligations of the EU in providing them. The EU should not fund the Indonesian occupation and extraction wealth from West Papua. At COP26, I attended a launch event alongside other parliamentarians for the Green State Vision, which uh, Benny has a copy of, authored by the UN, uh, ULMWP. There is a very clear alternative vision for the environment for West Papua. Um, I'd also like to thank you for your landmark intervention when you adopted your own motion here in the Dutch Parliament calling for the UNHCR to visit West Papua on February the 1st. This followed comments made last January by the Dutch Foreign Affairs Minister who stated that it is important to have such a visit by the High Commissioner as soon as possible. On March the 18th, 2021, the Foreign Affairs Committee of the Spanish Senate also passed a motion on the Spanish Government to express its concern about the human rights situation with Papua. In response to a follow-up question raised by Basque Senator and IPWP Vice Chair Gorka Ele Barreta on the 2nd December, the Spanish Government affirmed their support for the visit to go ahead. In reference to the long-denied access, the response also noted support to OHCHR entails a general rejection of any detriment measure adopted by national authorities to hinder visits and inspections on the ground. Supported comments have also been made by the UK government in response to the written question I submitted. Amanda Milling, Minister of Asia, said, We support the proposed visit of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights to Papua and encourage both sides to agree on dates for a visit. The High Commissioner's Office has said that it still aims to secure access to West Papua, but the obstacles being placed in its way by an Indonesian state. On November 30th last year, the High Commissioner's Office put out a strongly worded statement condemning human rights abuses in West Papua. As international scrutiny is intensifying, Indonesia is running out of excuses not to allow access to the UN Commissioner for Human Rights, and I look to you for further support. So I've got a number of requests for you individually as Dutch parliamentarians and also for the committee. 
So I ask you to establish a chapter of the IPWP in the Dutch Parliament, preferably by establishing a parliamentary friendship group. To write to the Dutch ambassador to the UN in Geneva to meet with Michel Bachelet regarding the mission to West Papua. I'd like to invite you and all colleagues in the Dutch Parliament to attend the European Parliamentarian's West Papua launch at the European Parliament in Brussels on the 12th of May and encourage Dutch members of the European Parliament to also attend. And also to join me on the 14th of June for the first International Parliamentarian's West Papua meeting since Covid struck in London in the UK Parliament. And also to nominate, or for somebody to nominate themselves, uh, to be a vice chair of the International Parliament of West Papua. And finally, for the committee to launch an inquiry or some form of scrutiny into why the UN Human Rights Commission has not yet visited West Papua. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Sobel. Then, uh, Mr. Hansen, any comments from a legal perspective? Please go ahead. Thank you, uh, Mr. Darun and uh, fellow honourable members. Um, thank you, Interim President uh, Benny Wender. I'm here to speak, hopefully briefly, uh, on behalf of international lawyers for West Papua. We are a network of lawyers around the world uh, who provide advice to the ULMWP um, and to the Free West Papua movement. We have members here in the Netherlands, um, in the UK, uh, in Indonesia, in Australia, Ghana, Nigeria. And the reason why we have that support from uh, across the world, um, including prominent jurists, former judges, human rights solicitors, the reason why we have that support is that the international law situation in West Papua is very clear and it's very horrific um, and it's quite blatant. Um, so under international law, uh, West Papua is a case of incomplete decolonization and a case of occupation. Uh, and it is also a place of ongoing human rights violations. Very briefly in, in terms of uh, why that is the case. So a, a treaty between the Netherlands and Indonesia was noted by the UN in 1962, a pretend referendum of barely over a thousand people, again, was noted by the UN in 1969. Uh, and the reality is that West Papua has never exercised their international law, their legal right to self-determination, to exercise their right to self-determination. And what happened in the 1960s was a violation of the sacred trust and obligation under Article 73 of the UN Charter. It was a breach of Indonesia's treaty obligations under the Charter and of the 1962 treaty that's known as the New York Agreement. Recognizing that historic decolonization of West Papua is incomplete, under international law, West Papua should be a matter for the UN Decolonization Committee. Uh, alternatively or simultaneously, the UN General Assembly should ask the International Court of Justice for an advisory opinion about the situation in West Papua. That, that big picture is important, uh, but there are also smaller steps that can be taken today to improve the lives of people in West Papua. Um, a, a visit by the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights is long overdue. Um, the delays mentioned by um, Mr. Alex Sobel um, are highly unusual. Uh, this is not something that is, that is seen often at, at all. Um, it, it puts Indonesia in, in very, um, I think, uncomfortable company. Uh, and it's also worth noting that um, over 115 states have standing invitations, not just to the High Commissioner, but to the UN Special Procedures. Uh, Indonesia is, is not one of those. So, uh, as, as uh, Mr. Alex Sobel mentioned, please speak to your representative um, at the United Nations and ask them to engage with their counterparts in Indonesia and with the Office of the High Commissioner regarding the planned visit to West Papua. Last year, uh, as, as um, Interim President uh, Benny Wender has mentioned, the ULMWP Provisional Government launched their Green State Vision at COP26.
uh, pledging to take decisive action to address the climate emergency. This vision includes making ecocide a criminal offence and restoring guardianship of natural resources to uh, Indigenous groups. This vision needs to be contrasted with the current devastating levels of environmental destruction in West Papua. Since 2001, millions of euros have been sent by the EU for Indonesian use in West Papua, uh, as, again, as, as, as mentioned uh, earlier. This needs to be viewed um, in the context of the ongoing negotiations for a free trade agreement between the EU and Indonesia. In 2019, the EU arranged a sustainability impact assessment as part of those trade negotiations. The assessment, which is hundreds of pages long, uh, failed to identify the conflict in West Papua as a concern. Uh, how, how is that possible? So there's, there's an armed conflict, thousands of people on the street protesting, extrajudicial killings, UN reports, NGO reports, the EU itself expressing concern. The assessment completely missed this. The assessment needs to be repeated. Perhaps more importantly, some elements of a free trade agreement between EU and Indonesia could be illegal. In September last year, the General Court of the EU ruled that self-determination and consent of the people were relevant factors to legality in an EU trade agreement with Morocco, citing concerns over Western Sahara. On a similar note, organizations based in the Netherlands should be reviewing any operations or investments in West Papua, ensuring that there is free, prior, and informed consent from the local population. Any robust due diligence process will surely identify that operating in West Papua is not possible without contributing to a violent military occupation and without overriding the wishes of West Papuans. So our, our, our request in relation to that is to please, please work with your counterparts uh, across the EU to pause or cancel the free trade agreement negotiations and to revisit the impact assessment in a, in a more realistic light. Finally, Representatives from the Netherlands will have an opportunity to ask Indonesian representatives questions and to make recommendations regarding their human rights records in West Papua during the upcoming fourth round universal periodic review at the UN in November. Recommendations to Indonesia can be made by other states. They should include engaging with the ULMWP to find a peaceful resolution to the situation in West Papua allowing the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights to visit West Papua and ensuring that that visit is open, transparent and includes unsupervised discussions with West Papuan representatives and human rights defenders. And those recommendations should also include allowing humanitarian and monitoring groups to visit and perhaps withdrawing troops from West Papua. Please encourage your representatives to make such recommendations uh, later this year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Hansen. Mr. Oredek Up from your side, any addition? Thank you, Chair. I don't have anything to add. Thank you. Okay. Before we go to the questions of the members present, um, I would like to ask you uh, to share your um, introductions with us. Uh, I mean, the paper copy of, uh, give us a paper copy of it, not just for the use of those who are present here in future, future situations but also to spread it among the members of the committee who are not present here now. Thank you very much. Mr. Seder. Yes, I would like to thank all of you who have, who have taken the time to be here and express uh, the, the situation concerning the people in West Papua. Uh, we've been, uh, as a party, we've been active on this topic for quite some years. Um, I'm, a par I'm a parliamentarian since last year, so I took over from my, pre, from my predecessor. But this topic has been a matter of interest for our party for a long time. So I think it's very important to have this meeting. And uh, once again, I'd like to thank you for this. Uh, as has been said, last month we petitioned a motion because we do see that the United Nations 
and, and the visit of the UN Commissioner is a very important step and a step that has been that has been postponed for too long. So that's why we, as a Dutch Parliament, which was widely received, so we petitioned the motion. But 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 it, but there were more fractions, more parties who feel that that this step should be taken. Um, was accepted, and 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 I'm glad to hear that that's that, that that's a step that shows uh, that shows that we do see that there are that there there's a serious situation that we need to address. Hearing this, uh, I have a few questions because I think that that's the that's the that's the round now. Um, one of the advices was to put the UN back on the D colonization committee agenda for the UN. And uh, concerning the Dutch kingdom, we have, we have uh, similar discussions. But I was wondering, what would the effect be? Uh, I think that's a question for the international uh, human rights lawyer. What would the effects be if we would petition for that? Because I'm looking for, because uh, I'm not sure what that effect would be and how that could help the cause of ensuring human rights for West Papua. So that's one question I have. I, I have more, but. Um, Let's do two questions each. Okay. Uh, then the second question is, we've been talking about a New York agreement, uh, which was between Indonesia, the, ne the, ne the Netherlands. My question was, has the United States, have, uh, do they have any part in that? And I was wondering what, according to the people, is the legal status of it right now in 2022? And also, what's, so what would be the responsibility of the Dutch government looking at the act, uh, looking at the agreement uh, which was made um, named the New York uh, agreement so those are some legal those are some legal questions I, I have thank you mr. Seda mr. van Raan thank you very much uh, thank you for, uh, for for being here also thank uh, to the party of uh, mr. Seda for keeping it on the uh, agenda uh, we received your uh, great state state vision uh, some time ago and it very closely aligns with my party, Party for the Animals. Uh, we also included the case of West Papua in our initiative proposal on ecocide law, which is, will be discussed in Dutch Parliament the, this year, preferably before uh, summer. Um, and in addition to what Mr. Seder said uh, on the situation, of course, the Netherlands also have a special, I would say, obligation uh, historic to to keep this uh, on the agenda. The question I have for you is as follows. The current government uh, sees trade agreements as the way to improve human rights situations. Not so much more laws or more. Um, and from what I understand um, of your various contributions, um, I, I see a, a bit of a difference between that vision, that, uh, the, 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 the strategy of the Netherlands, free trade is good for human rights, versus what you are advocating. So what would be your more precise, if you like, pressing um, statement to our, to our government? So that is one. And the second one is the... Of course, with, uh, with fossil, uh, fossil energy being phased out as soon as possible, regardless of Ukraine, regardless of um, because of the climate change. There's also now a big plan for the expansion of the LNG factory in West Papua. How do you uh, see that? Is that, from your point of view, helping you? Uh, on the short term, but maybe not in the long term. What, what is your... And it's also maybe financed by... I'm not sure about that, but how is this financed? And how can we help you there? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Van Graan. Um, Mr. Mander, would it be a good idea that the questions by Mr. Seder would be answered by the legal advice? Go ahead, please. Thank you very much. The effect of... West Papua being on the decolonization committee. Um, it is a uh, slow and bureaucratic process, but what the, the effect would be that Indonesia uh, would be required um, uh, under, 
Article 73E uh, to report at least annually to the Secretary General and to the committee about the progress of their administration of West Papua towards self-determination um, and also about improvements in the living condition of people in West Papua. So it would bring regular attention, systematic attention, um, mandatory reporting, and it's worth thinking about the process that, that East Timor went through, um, and it's worth thinking about the, the current process that, that New Caledonia um, is, is also going through. It, it's a forum that requires attention rather than um, consistent, uh, you know, appeals for attention. So that, that, would, be, that would be the effect. Uh, we, we think that that would be a beneficial effect. I think this, the next question was about the, the legal status of the New York agreement. Is, is that correct? Yes. I was wondering if you think that, um, that uh, certain rights or certain obligations are still in effect according to the to the agreement and specifically the part where it says that an act of self-determination uh, should, should, should be included and should be uh, part of the conditions. The New York Agreement, uh, which is a, a treaty between the, the Netherlands um, and Indonesia, um, was noted uh, at the UN, but it is a treaty between two states. It was encouraged, facilitated, some might say pressured by others, by other states, including the US, but fundamentally it's a treaty between two states. The obligations placed on Indonesia as part of that, or signed up to by Indonesia as part of that treaty, have not been fulfilled. So it is, it is arguable that there is um, unfulfilled treaty obligations there remaining for Indonesia. There were some details about how the self-determination exercise should take place and they were referring to international, international practice um, and at the time, international practice at the time, not now, um, at least at least required one man, one vote. Certainly the standard that was mentioned in the New York agreement was not met by the, the act of free choice or the act of no choice exercise in 1969 where barely a thousand people were asked to, to, to vote on whether to stay with Indonesia or not. Um, do you mind if I briefly mention the, about the trade agreement, the third, third question? Just, uh, just very briefly, I, I think that uh, perhaps it's fair to say that trade agreements can bring human rights improvement. Um, I, I think that's a policy question that Mr. Alex Sobel will be much better positioned than, than me to comment on. But it, it's worth um, just returning to the, the, the remark I made about the sustainability impact assessment. So if, if part, of the intention, part of the intention of a free trade agreement is to improve human rights, then how did the impact assessment miss an ongoing conflict? It's a it's performative process. Um, so uh, I, I, perhaps in theory, the, the approach is correct, but in practice, what we're seeing is uh, uh, that an entire armed conflict and, and the rights of, of millions of people are, are, are being ignored. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sobel. I'm just going to respond to Mr. Uh, Van Rand's points. Um, so, so, first of all, I just want to say I, I absolutely understand from a United Kingdom point of view what it means for Netherlands to have special obligation to West Papua as a former colonial power. We still have um, unresolved issues around decolonisation as well, particularly in the Chagos Islands, which bear some resemblance to West Papua. But it also means, and we know this from, from, from the Chagos Islands, that when our parliament speaks on that issue, other parliaments will follow and other governments will follow the lead. So it is not only that you have a special obligation, but you have a more powerful voice than other nations. And other nations in Europe and more broadly will take a lead when the Dutch Parliament and Dutch government take a lead. In terms of trade agreements, um, in the United Kingdom at the moment, we're going through a very broad set of trade negotiations for reasons we probably don't want to get into today. Um, and one example is the um, trade agreement that we're pursuing with Brazil. One of the problems with that trade agreement is that the trade agreement includes provision um, against the flow of goods 
from legal deforestation, sorry, illegal deforestation, illegal deforestation. But the issue in Brazil is that the Brazilian government are increasingly legalizing deforestation, allowing deforestation to happen legally. And so those goods under the proposed trade agreement between the UK and Brazil could enter the UK market. Many of us in the parliament, probably a majority to be honest, um, don't want any deforestation goods. And so similar issues will um, arise between the EU and Indonesia in their trade agreement, where the Indonesian government are operating under Indonesian law legally, but under if the same thing was happening in the EU, it would be illegal. And so these are exactly the sort of points that need to be made, that, that it is inappropriate, and actually I would say it should be an obstacle to signing of any free trade agreement if the activity being taken in that country were illegal within the European Union. So the issues of human rights, certainly the human rights abuses, would be exceedingly illegal in the EU. The deforestation activities would be legal. Some of the other issues around ecocide, which I think Benny will pick up, would be legal in the EU. And these are really important issues. If we remember when TTIP um, provision was, the, the Wallonian government in Belgium raised these issues and that trade agreement was not signed. And so I think there's some special responsibility here coming back to that point, within the Dutch Parliament to raise those issues, because each individual member state, as you know, can um, restrict the signing of EU trade agreements. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sobel. We have to vacate this room by 12.45 so that it can be prepared for the next meeting that has to take place here. So we cannot continue with our questions, though you might have them, but you have the contact details, uh, so you could uh, continue in another way to bring forward any questions that you might have. I would like... Mr. Verhaan? I thought that would be a concluding uh, words from the visitors. Yeah, that would be a good idea, but it's, we have the time limit. I, I cannot change it. I'm sorry. Um, but um, I would like to thank the uh, um, two parliament, fellow parliamentarians for their, uh, for their commitment and their questions. Of course, Master Wenda and uh, the rest of your uh, support group, um, thank you very much for coming here and bringing forward what is interesting and important, and especially also for the questions that you asked us to take steps. Uh, and of course, Mr. Wenda, for you, the last word, please. Well, thank you very much for, uh, for having us. And before we leave, I just leave this message to this parliament and uh, your uh, committee of uh, people of West Papua are crying out. And we will be, uh, you know, we've been uh, discriminated because of we've been Christian or we've been Muslim, or partly because we have been Muslim, uh, Christian. Secondly, we have been black. That's why Indonesia discriminate us. So 20 years, 30 years time, maybe my people will disappear before too late the Dutch government and Dutch people moral obligation to, to free my people. We are under the illegal occupation. So please pray for my people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And that's the end of this uh, meeting. Thank you very much.